Alright, this is a weird video, a uh, weird race review. I was going to make this last night, and he cut in the uh, update their points until almost 10. So it was like over over an hour after the finish. Uh, so I was going to make this probably sometime this evening after I got home from work, but I never made this to work today. Got into a bit of a car accident. Uh, I hit a deer. It was... I'm okay. Car, I don't know about the car. Um, took it to a body shop and stuff. We'll see how much it costs. Uh, uh, this, this is the reason you save up money, guys. Uh, I'm actually really glad that I saved up money. Uh, either hopefully it'll pay for the you know damages and I can keep using it, or you know buy a new car. But you didn't come here for me talking about uh car accidents, well, or at least not, you know, road cars, we need to talk about Indy cars a bit, um, yeah, so Laguna Seca, pretty, pretty solid race, got a strategy going on, you didn't really know who was going to win this race until the very end, um, there was, there was some stuff going on, it was pretty clean at first, and we got some shenanigans. I remember one point there was a caution came out. It was pretty controversial caution. Oh yeah, the Marcus Armstrong spin and stall. Hummingbird. Or hummingbird flew away. It was a hummingbird. Uh, he spun and IndyCar waited until Joseph Newgarden got in pit road and then threw the yellow. Um, so they didn't, he didn't get caught out by not by staying out. But he didn't have to do an outlap, so he got benefited, and, and then restarted sick. So that was another example of Penske favoring their golden boy. I was not happy about that. Was happy about New Guard making a mistake and falling fifth after that, and then making another mistake, spinning out and, and falling the 19th. <laughs> Cost him 29 points that way. Um... He could have gotten uh, probably probably 41 points. He got I think 12. That is huge in the championship. Um, very huge. Oh, um, we look at the lap leaders. Yeah, Newgarden led five laps. Uh, who's the pole sitter? I would say was it Kirkwood? Uh, Kirkwood led 24 laps. Erdo led eight. Rossi led. Then Alex Plo led half the race. It was a 95 lap for a pretty good race. 48 laps we led. Um, a lot of stuff happened. Lachlan did not have a good race. He finished. He finished. Oh, there was only the Luca Yeo crash. Was that turn? I want to say four. Look at the track now. Let's try to draw it the way. You would. There would be there's one, and there'd be a hairpin, and then there's this turn, and I think it was about here at Gio. And then there's that, and then that, and then there's the corkscrew up there, the rainy curve, whatever. Yeah. Horrible, horrible outline of Luna. VK, I guess, had mechanical problems. I know Harvey dropped out. There was the wreck towards the end um, that Canapino kind of caused. Uh, Simpson and Canapino were racing, and I guess they made contact, and Canapino cut down Simpson's tire. Simpson and Raw uh, crashed, and Ray Hall crashed because of it. Um, Canapino got a penalty, which means Kiff and Simpson is probably going to start receiving death threats from the Argentinians. That's, that's, that's the nature of, of 2024 and Chitter um, and other social media platforms. Uh, McLaughlin finished two laps in arrears. Armstrong was two laps down. Stingrayer, oh, um, he had some trouble at one point. He's a lap down. 20th, 19 cars lead lap. Nolan Siegel spun at one point. He still somehow finished ahead of Malukas. Even though it looks like Malukas had a much better race. Did I mention Nolan Siegel's in the sixth car? So. McLaren decided, you know, fuck that, you know, we, we said, oh yeah, it's Dale Porcher, he's in this car for the rest of the season after the 500, uh, I guess it means nothing, yeah, there's been big, big beef on Shitter between, uh, uh, was it, um, Scotty Mack and Tony Kanad, uh, nice to see Seagull, um, so, oh, 
Oh, we look it looks like the real deal. Um, this was not a good weekend for <laughs> Howard had a kind of a rough go of it too. Where did he finish? He finished seventh somehow. Dixon snuck in sixth. The slow one. Herta was second. Rossi was third. Romain Grosjean, very solid fourth place. He needs runs like that. That was a good that was a good run for him. Kirkwood fifth. Then Dixon and Power. Pato. Ferrucci ended up in ninth. Erickson was tenth. Rosenquist, Siegel, Christian Rasmussen is in those fouls on for him thirteenth. Trufaldi fourteenth, Lundgaard fifteenth, and then Lucas Lundquist, Canapino, and Newgarden. The rest of your uh Top 10. Top 20, I should say. Top, I mean, lead lap. Blow takes the points lead by 23 points over Power, 32 over Dixon, and 68 over Herda. So there's a big gap. It looks like three guys, really. Their championship threat. I still think New Garden's going to make some noise, but he's 104 points back. I know it was... Yeah... Uh, karma definitely did not help. Hey, no more instant karma. Um, yeah. Erda Kirkwood Award, Rossi, and McLaughlin are all, they're all within 40 points. Uh, New Garden's within 40 points to all of them. And I can't, you know, it's hard to imagine you won't blow by them all on the, the oval. We've got We've got uh, nine races to go, guys, and and girls, and whatever. <laughs> Still Pride Month. Alright, how many words gone? Um. Yeah. There's only three road courses left. Well, two road courses and one street course. I don't remember how it. I think it's. I think the schedule is. Well, I can look at the schedule. Well, offhand, I think it's Mid Ohio, um, Iowa Doubleheader, Toronto, Gateway, Portland, Milwaukee Doubleheader, and Nashville. I think is the rest of the schedule. Yeah, K Kirkwood is fifth in points, and Pato, then Rossi, then Scotty Mack and New Garden's weirdly the lowest of the Penske drivers. Rosenquist solid tenth. Uh, rest of the uh, standings: Lungard's eleventh, Ferrucci is twelfth, Erickson's thirteenth, Grosjean is fourteenth. He's got 144 points. He's 141 behind below. Um, so that's the kind of, I guess, that I don't want to call it the demarcation, but this is where you get to the guys that are, they're not even, they're, they're closer to, they're closer to me and everybody, so like, Armstrong on back is closer to me in points than they are to Blow, uh, in terms of number of points, not in spots. There's been 40 guys that have points, so, you gotta get low. Armstrong's 15, Ray Hall's Two points behind him at 16th. Lundquist is 17th. No, VK in 17th. Lundquist in 18th. I don't know why. Um, Finapaldi is in 19th. He only has 97 points. And Simpson in 20th. I think Stingray in 23rd is the lowest of all the full time drivers. Kian Apino missed the race, but he would have got at least. Five points from that, so he would have been in the top 20, but at least. But who knows if he would have been any higher? Uh -huh. He would have had to put together like a a 19th place run at least with the time with it appalling. Simpson, yeah, 20th. Canapino, 21st. And you know, for all the people saying Rasmussen's not good, he's 22nd. I mean, I guess you could say he's not good, but. Considering what kind of luck he's had, you know, this was a much needed weekend for him. He passed Stingray at least in points. 
Dale Porsche is still 24. So he, he, he's missed a few races, and he's still only... I want to say he's missed at least three races, and he's... He's missed pretty much two races more than Canapino, and he's 12 points back. It's poor Cher. I'm sure he could have clawed that back. I mean, if you look at where Siegel finished, 12. Had poor Cher run this race, he'd arguably be ahead of Canapino. Hey, Canapino uh, gets the better results uh, if he wants to stay in IndyCar. You know, and I don't know, there's a lot of people you want to say. <laughs> and you get to the random people. Harvey Blomquist. Harvey's 25th. Um, yeah, I lot. Siegel, Giotto. Yeah, Siegel's in the 6th for the rest of the year. Malukas, of course, you know, is in the 66. I mentioned that. Um... Malukas, one race ran. He's already tied for Carpenter for 34th in points. He's going to be at least tied for Sato for 33rd after the hybrid era starts in Ohio. Like another top 20 is another at least 10 points, so they'll jump ahead of even Larson and Daly then. Um, I think 19th. No, 18th. Another like 18th play. Well, he finished like another run well if he finishes where he did today next week he'll he'll leapfrog Castor Nevis and potentially Giotto and you know you never know if Giotto gets uh, the call in Ohio Malukas is well, that's a decent spot for Malukas apparently Cat Legs going to be running rest of the ovals for uh coin um so that really would leave him only three races to fill. Um, two weeks? Until, um... Uh, yeah, Mid-Ohio. I, I guess I get two weeks off, two days off of work this week. That's re really weird. Um, uh, my, my other day off will be Friday. I've got, I've got another Western Caves Wild Card coming out. Mario Baseball. I don't know. I haven't started Pac-Man Fear yet. I, I don't know. I, I just gotta get I edit. I think I technically even made the thumbnail for that part, so I technically gotta edit that. I can get, like... <laughs> I could probably get, like, ten up. That's ten, ten Mondays worth of content out of but it records in Pac-Man Fever. And I'm still going to have to record more at least, even if I just do off-camera stuff so they get to all the rest of the mini, because it's a really weird thing. You'll understand it once you get to episode 3. Or, yeah, because, yeah, it's going to be 10, maybe 11 parts if I'm... 7 to 11 parts, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm shaking up. Um, I don't know, I might randomly do some more sports content. Um, you know, I could do another review tonight, um, or not tonight, but I'll upload another review tomorrow. Guess what tomorrow, uh, tonight is? That's right, Game 7 Stanley Cup Finals. Florida got out to a 3 nothing series lead, and I started watching Series 4, I guess, you know, just because I didn't want to miss Florida. Winning, I mean, I'd rather, I'd, I mean, I don't really, really want to watch the Florida Panthers win the Cup, but now I could watch the Edmonton Oilers win the Cup. They forced Game 7 tonight in Florida. I don't know how this game is going to go, ah, because yeah, Florida didn't look the greatest in Game 6. They didn't look the greatest in Game 4, but, you know, in front of their own crowd, they kept it close in Game 5, and they're in front of their own crowd tonight. I'm not the kind of guy who thinks, oh, they lost game four so they can win game five in front of their home crowd, but I do think they play better at home. They're, they're two and one in the final, you know, so far uh, in Florida and one and two in Edmonton. Whatever happens, they're going to have more wins at home than they did in Edmonton. Uh, 
you know, even if they have an equal number of lots. Um, so I guess we got any car race review today. We got we got hockey related stuff on possibly Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. I don't know. I don't even know how I'm gonna get to work and from work. I might I might get dropped off. I might have my mom pick me up and drop me off Tuesday through Thursday. And I might try to bump bum ride home from work, you know, those those days. I'm gonna play it by ear. Yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to talk about. This probably went on way too long, but, uh, you know, I did get a life update out of this. Uh, I'll try to try to edit this up. What time is it? It is, oh, 11.45. Almost time for, for launch in a bit, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm definitely hungry. Probably be around lunchtime at work. You know, depending on, yeah. Anyway, I'm Western Caves. I'll see you in the next video. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Uh yeah, we'll see ya. Um Yeah, oh yeah, fanny pack. Yeah, I'm wearing my Milwaukee Bucks shirt and I got and I hit a deer today, you know, when I'm wearing this. The irony is not lost on me. Um I hope the car's alright. I hope you guys are alright. <sighs> See you guys later. Hopefully you saw that.